Biden's domestic violence law passes, women will use this as leverage in divorce cases. At some point, we've got to be men, and we've got to be women, and we've got to say, hell no! No one, as my father would say, that the cardinal sin of all sins was the abuse of power. That if Biden's domestic violence law passes, women will use this as leverage in divorce cases. At some point, we've got to be men, and we've got to be women, and we've got to say, hell no! Remember them warning me as chairman and warning the world that if Biden's domestic violence law passes, women will use this as leverage in divorce cases. At some point, we've got to be men, and we've got to be women, and we've got to say, hell no! No one, as my father would say, that the cardinal sin of all sins was the abuse of power. When you do not do your duty, you are allowing a fraud to take place against the public. When you do not do your duty, you are allowing a fraud to take place against the public. When you do not do your duty, you are allowing a fraud to take place against the public. And her question is, is it possible to put an amendment in the Violence Against Women Act that would require states to have a specific presumption against perpetrators of domestic violence getting custody or joint custody of children. So I wonder if one of our counselors might address that. Just give me one answer. I'll take a step back. As a lawyer, I don't think you can do it legally because that's asking the federal government to dictate state law. Mm -hmm. And federal government can't dictate state law. What they can do is condition funds. I mean, everything attached to the Violence Against Women Act, the Family Violence Services Prevention Act, CAPTA, you know, all the ways that they give states funds, they can say, well, we're going to give you funds if. That's, that's how it has to be done. At some point, we've got to be men, and we've got to be women, and we've got to say, hell no! When you do not do your duty, you are allowing a fraud to take place against the public. Association. 
a special organization which I have been a member of for 20 plus years and have served in a variety of capacities, including uh, president and uh, chair of legislative affairs for many years. The Maryland Psychological Association opposes House Bill 1132 based upon both current social science literature and clinical experience derived from working with high concept families post-divorce or post-separation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Madam Co-Chairman. Uh, my name is Paul Berman. I'm a licensed psychologist. Mm -hmm. I'm practicing in uh, Townsend, Maryland. I'm also here on behalf of the Maryland Psychological Association. Uh, my wife and I actually have prepared some remarks. I thought she was going to say one thing, except she stole what I was going to say um, uh, in response to other uh, proponents. Um, but I'll make a couple of brief comments. First, um, I too am confused. Um, we, we have current law, based upon case law, um, which says that um, decisions should be made based upon the best interests of the child. Being divorced, that are in the process of divorce, joint legal custody and equal access time is not appropriate and harmful to the children. I strongly urge you to oppose 1132. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. My name is Craig Little. I am a solo practitioner uh, from Towson, Maryland, and uh, my concentration is in family law. I've been a, 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 an attorney. Uh, concentrating in family law for 15 years. I am talking today as a representative of the F Family and Juvenile Law Section Council. This is a committee of 20 attorneys uh, from all around our state, and we represent the more than 1,300 family law attorneys that practice, uh, that practice here in Maryland. Um, the Family and Juvenile Law Section Council is opposed to the passage of HB 1132, as you know, we have um, uh, felt this way now for several years, and we will be uh, talking in support of, uh, of the uh, custody bill or the custody determinations bill that will be coming before this committee later on this afternoon. I think strongly urge you to oppose 1132. Thank you. The Family and Juvenile Law Section Council is opposed to the passage of HB 1132, and we stand in opposition to HB 1132. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I'm Cindy Callahan. I'm a circuit court judge in Montgomery County. This is not a good day, obviously, to be a judge, but here I am. Um, uh, many of you have seen me here before. I've been a circuit court judge for about two years. I have previously testified a number of times. Um, I guess I could say that my law practice for 25 plus years was as a family lawyer. Um, and the last two years have certainly given me a different perspective. But what I would say is that, um, without any hesitation, the one thing that's clear is that every family is different. And every family is entitled to have a court make a determination on the basis of that family's need. Um, I've actually been authorized today by the Judicial Conference, which is the representative body of Maryland District Circuit and appellate judges to say that the Judicial Conference opposes House Bill 1132. Um, to say that the Judicial Conference opposes House Bill 1132. To say that the Judicial Conference opposes House Bill 1132. Um, no one, as my father would say, that the cardinal sin of all sins was the abuse of power. Strongly urge you to oppose 1132. Thank you. The Family and Juvenile Law Section Council is opposed to the passage of HB 1132. To say that the Judicial Conference opposes House Bill 1132. That if Biden's domestic violence law passes, women will use this as leverage in divorce cases. No one, as my father would say, that the cardinal sin of all sins was the abuse of power. At some point we've got to be men and we've got to be women and we've got to say hell no. When you do not do your duty, you are allowing a fraud to take place against the public. At some point we've got